grateful God. We're so grateful for him for waking us up, for getting us started, for turning the page. There's so much rhetoric and so much things that's going on in the world today, but what we can always, always, always count on is the goodness of the Lord and his blessings on our life, that we are his masterpiece. Oh God, that he loves us more than anything. And that we can take hold of. And we can hold that to our hearts. Let's pray. God, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for everything, God. For those things that are going on in our lives that are ups and downs and turmoils. We thank you, God. Because we know, Father God, that we can depend on you. That we can count on you. And that we can grow through it. We thank you, Father, for just your love, for your faithfulness, God, for just being there for us. Father God, we just, we just come to you to, and ask you to look at our babies, those that are hurting, those that are healing, those that are sick, those that are lost, those that are seeking. And we just ask you, Father, to do your will. To touch them, Father, in that special way that only you can. You said, suffer the little children. Come unto me. And God, you've shown that. So for that, God, we are giving you all glory and honor. Father, for just embracing us. For each one of us. For our families. For when we are sick, Father, when, when, the, when, when we have lost a loved one. You're right there. And there's so much going on in the world, God. But we can see your strength. We can see your faithfulness. We can see what you are doing. You are changing things. I just heard this morning. You are changing things. You are opening doors. You are turning things around. And your glory is going to be magnified. Oh, God, all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus. And something in the room makes us raise our hands. And Father God, we can give you all glory for what you are doing, what you're going to do. God, we just ask, Father, that as we go through this service, Father, that, Father God, you just have your way. Do whatever it is that you choose to do. Do touch whoever you too choose to touch. We're just asking, Father, as the songs are playing of Zion, Father, they're sung to you. And, Father, the, the sweetness of, of who you are portrays and, and, and comes forward. We thank you, God, for just the love, the abundance of love. We thank you, Father, for giving us a shepherd and a first lady that shows us who you are that shows us what we can do when we turn our face to you and that we open our eyes and see and we hear your voice. Thank you. Thank you, God, for just, oh, just being alive, just being able, Father, to say to, to anyone that we have a God that cares, we have a God that shares, and we have a God that loves. There's nothing that we can't ask you, Father, in your name, and it doesn't happen. So thank you. God, as we continue with the service, we're just asking again, God, just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
How many of you came to worship God on this morning? Amen. This song just says that we love to call on the name of Jesus. Is there anybody in the house that loves to call on his name? Because you know that when you call on the name of Jesus, things have to shift. Things have to change. Because at the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every knee shall bow. Every tongue is going to confess the name of Jesus. But how many of you know from experience that when you called on the name of Jesus, things began to change, amen? So I don't know about you, but for me in my life, when I call on the name of Jesus, things begin to shift. So I love to call on the name of Jesus because that's where my power is, amen? So this morning, we're just going to begin to call on the name of Jesus. So we're going to see what we experience on today when we begin to call on his name because I know that I know that I know that I know that when I call on the name of Jesus, power begins to fall. Things begin to shift. There's something that has to happen when I call on the name of Jesus. So if you would stand up on your feet and let's get ready to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I get excited about the name of Jesus. Because there is no other name like the name of Jesus, our Savior, our King, our Peace, our everything. Amen. Come on and put your hands together as we get ready to celebrate the name of Jesus.
Because he is Lord of all, he deserves everything from us. Amen. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, all of the 
just sing that one more time? I think we I think we're not singing. I think the praise team is singing, but no one else is singing. Can we just stand and sing that? I know you don't usually stand. But can you just sing? Can't you Minister Farrah, could you just I, I'm just in my in my heart I'm just singing. We we just need to sing that one more time. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. All over the building. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship. And those of you that are looking through live television this morning who are screaming, good morning, amen, and welcome, hallelujah, to the Abundant Love Live, amen. God is good, amen. This is the day that he has made. And we will rejoice because he deserves the glory. Oh, God. He deserves it. He said, if you lift me up, I'm going to draw. My God, my God. I don't know about you, but I need something from the Lord today. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise because he truly deserves the glory. Are there any first time visitors or second or third? <laughs> if, if, if you would, if you would please stand. We just want to love on you. You don't have to say anything. We just want to love on you this morning. Amen. I see we have one. Amen. Anyone else? All right. Okay. Well, I ushers have a little token there to give you. And uh, in behalf of our awesome pastor, Dr. E.L. Ross, and our beautiful first lady, Sister Sheila Ross, we love you and we appreciate you. And we know you could have gone anywhere else, but the Lord directed you here. And for that, we are so grateful and we're so thankful. Abundant Love Fellowship, let's show our guests how much we love her. Amen, amen. And since we really hadn't greeted, I know we stood, but I just want you to greet maybe two or three people. I know how we are. We get, we get lost and we don't come back. So, but if you can just greet two or three people this morning and just let them know you love them and that you're so glad that they're here. Amen.
that are coming forth. Amen. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, October 6th, and these are your weekly announcements. On Saturday, October 12th, Pearls will be having their rainbow tea at 1030 a.m. The guest speaker will be Minister Yvonne Rose from New Mount Olive Baptist Church. Pink Out Sunday will be Sunday, October 20th. We are asking all member partners and their guests to wear pink in observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Man Up Prayer Breakfast will be held on Saturday, October 26th at 9.30 a.m. The guest speaker will be Pastor Samuel Doyle of Greater New Light Baptist Church. Abundant Love Fellowship's One Accord Marriage Ministry is held every third Saturday at 11 a.m. in classroom number three. Pearl's Women Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in the youth room. Man Up Men's Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in classroom number two. New Members Orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and everyone is invited to attend. Please contact Minister Yolanda Minor for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. For additional information, please contact Minister Evelyn Jordan. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live, so join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible Study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candice Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can also visit our website at www.alfwaco.com for an update on future events. You can sell your tithes and offerings via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button, or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 15047, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via Cash App to ALF Offering, or via QR code. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. Amen. Praise God. I just want to remind everybody uh, about the card reader I was told was out. So if you have any uh, questions about that, uh, you might just get in touch with uh, one of the finance 
uh, committee members. Amen. It is offering time. Amen. Amen. I was reminded from Psalms 116, there was a question asked, what shall I render? What shall you render unto the Lord this morning? Because he's been so good. I love that song, that part of that song that the ladies just, we just got through singing, but there's a part in there that Minister Farrell and, and, and Sister Rhonda does. They, they say, I can never for repay for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. What are you going to render to the Lord today? You can't repay him, but we sure can thank him and give him praise for what he's done. Amen. And what he's already going to do. Amen. As we obey the Lord in our giving. Amen. And then the Lord reminded me, it's not so much, Evelyn, you decide, you have the, how the word of God tell us to decide on what you're going to give. But he reminded me this morning about my attitude as I'm giving. This is worship. We always hear people say, we're still worshiping. And yet we give our gifts any old kind of way to the Lord and expect him to bless them. As you get your your tithes and offerings together, your seeds. We know this is good ground. But we just want to pray before you give. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to give. Lord, I pray that you would search our hearts and let us give with the gift of love, with the gift of expectancy, as we plant, not given to get, but we know that when a seed is planted in good ground, we can expect a harvest. So God, we, we're looking for some miracles in this house. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Whether there be finances, whether there's healing, deliverance, salvation, God, as we sow, into good ground, we expect a harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. So as the ushers begin to pass the envelope, if there's anyone that need an envelope, amen, as the offering, like it comes around, let's give unto the Lord.
you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have come to the point of this service where we dare not take lightly, amen, our communion. And as Minister Minor pray, I ask that you search your hearts and ask God to show you what we need to repent of. Show us that very thing that only he knows about that we need to repent of. And I pray that we ask God to forgive us of all our sins. And so we won't bring damnation to our mind, body, nor soul. So all standing at this time. Shall we all bow? Heavenly God, we come to you this morning giving you all the glory and all the honor, thanking you, God, for being the bread of life, thanking you, God, for your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins, thanking you that we would never be hungry again, we would never thirst again, because you came, hung, bled, and died that we may live forever. Heavenly Father, we come this morning asking your forgiveness for any trespassing that we've done, any sinning that we've done that is not pleasing to you. Lord, please help us to live a righteous life. Help us to live according to your will and your, your way, God. Guide our every thought, our every desire. Everything we give, we give unto you. We magnify you, O oh God, in the holy and mighty name of Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Amen. One of the church two ordinances or sacraments, the Lord's Supper, was instituted by Jesus to commemorate his death, to symbolize the new covenant to the point the fellowship of a redeemed people gathered at his table and to anticipate the Masonic banquet yet to come. For I have received of the Lord that which also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he break it and he said take ye eat all of it for this is my body which is broken for you do this in the remembrance of me and after the same manner also, he took the cup, which he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye in remembrance of me. For as much as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I bless you.
tomorrow because he lives our fear is gone because I Great God that you are. Father God, we come before your presence even now. Father God, we humble ourselves before you. Father God, we come against every proud spirit. We come against every arrogant spirit. We come against every demonic spirit, Father, that would try to hinder our worship on today. Father God, we know you to be God and God all by yourself. So Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus and cast out every demonic spirit, Father God. Cast out every spirit of conflict, Father. Cast out every uh, spirit, Father God, that would try and come in and rob you of your glory. Oh God, if, if there's only one tongue that'll give you praise, let it be ours, God. If there's only one set of hands that go up, let it be ours, God. If there's only one person that, that goes forth in the dance, let it be ours, God. For truly you have been good to us, God. Father, we give you praise. And now we have come to hear from the Holy Spirit. We have come to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to the people of God. And Father God, we're ready, God. Our hearts are ready. Our minds are ready, Father. Our spirit is ready to receive, Father, what you would say to us. Now, God, do me a favor. Speak through me and speak to me, Father God. Oh, uh, God, let me say nothing that is not in line with your will. But, Father God, let me, let me prophesy as I am commanded by you. And, Father God, that you may get the glory and your people may get the blessing. I thank you now give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen and amen. And the people will be to God. While you're finding that, I want to make an additional um, announcement. Um, this is for our lit group. Uh, we will not have lit this Saturday. Amen. We, we all are going to give our attention to the um, to the pearls tea on this on this Saturday. Amen? Amen. So we will not have lit. Amen. This Saturday. 
Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 13. There is a word from the Lord. Glory be to God. Psalms chapter 13. If you have it this morning, say, Pastor, I got it. If you don't, say, hold up. Okay, I heard a hold up. Amen. Praise be unto God. Glory be to God. While we're waiting, can we wait on God? <laughs> While we're waiting, can we wait on God? Somebody said, well, Pastor, how do I wait on God? I wait on him with praise. Okay, 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 okay. You, I see that some of us are preoccupied. Amen. I need about three of y'all to just go ahead and wait on God with praise. I guarantee you, your praise is going to be contagious. I guarantee you, if you start praying, with all the stuff that's going on in your life, I dare you to praise God right now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If they don't want to praise, don't worry about them. This is your praise. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Will somebody just step into your praise right now? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 13. Psalms chapter 13. How long will thou forget me? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Let my enemies say, I have prevailed against thee. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Oh, I felt that right there. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't going nowhere. Mm, Y'all didn't say it like you meant it. High five your neighbor and say, I'm not going nowhere. I'm in position to be blessed. I'm in position, Father God, to go higher in God. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to be moved. Why? It's in verse 5 and 6. But I have trusted in thy mercy, and my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Uh, I might not be able to hold a note but I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me look at your neighbor like you smell something and say do you know who you dealing with oh I need you to say it like you got something tell your neighbor do you know who you're dealing with Father, I need your help. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Do you know who you are dealing with? There's a term, and young people, I hope, since we're not going to have lit Saturday, uh, can I just go down you all neighborhood? There's a term that the young people use as it relates to relationships. And that term is dealing with. Mm, mm, mm. Who you dealing with now? Now there are many meanings of the term and I had to look it up in the Urban Dictionary. But when it relates to relationships, 
It means you are potentially in a relationship with someone. Or you actually are in a relationship with somebody. And when I read it, Sister Aya, there was a little bit of confusion. But I quickly comprehended that it suggests that there is a certain amount of uncertainty about the relationship. And the uncertainty could be because of not really knowing how the other person feels about you. Mm -hmm. I've learned in person you're in relationship with how they move around can be confusing. This is true even in our relationship with God. Because when you don't know who he is, you struggle with how he operates. Ooh, can we be real, real this morning? Many people are suffering in their relationship with God because of their assumptions about God. And they have put their assumptions about God over the knowledge of God. Mm. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, the word assumption means to accept something is true without proof. Mm. Many times in our relationship with God, we assume things about him because we don't really know him. And when we are trying to deal with God, according to what the young people do, our assumptions, from our assumptions, we deal with him incorrectly. Okay, let me give you an example. Israel assumed that when they prayed for deliverance, that God would gather a heavenly army and come and rescue them out of Egypt. But when Moses showed up and God used him to deliver them, they dealt with God incorrectly. And they start murmuring and complaining, blaming the one that God used. How many times have we assumed how God was going to operate in our lives and we reacted incorrectly to how he moved. Mm, we assumed God was going to uh, excuse us from any trouble once we surrendered our lives to him. We assumed that God was going to rain provision from the sky and we would not have to go to work. We assumed God was going to overlook our sins and not check us when we were wrong. And we reacted we incorrectly and blamed him for the trouble. Distrusted him for the provision. And got upset with him when he checked us. Because of our assumptions about him. But can I tell you something? In your relationship with God, throw away your assumptions and embrace what he reveals to you. Oh God, because God can only be revealed. He's too much God to be recognized by human comprehension. He's too wise to be figured out by human intelligence. He's too complex in his dealings to be placed in human assumptions. He must be revealed. And we must react to the revelation, not the assumption. Because what you thought, what you accepted could be wrong. Oh, God, touch your neighbor and say, I was wrong. Let's go ahead and turn this service into a confession service. And tell your neighbor, I was wrong. I thought he was going to bless me a certain way. I thought he was going to move like he did in somebody else's life. I thought he should have done this or that long time ago only for God to reveal to you and you find out you were wrong. 
And the reason that you're wrong is because you didn't know who you were really dealing with. I know you got a position in the church. But do you really know who you're dealing with? Oh, I know, I know, I, I know, I know, you, you, uh, uh, you're gifted. But do you really know who you're dealing with? I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, people love to hear you sing and use your voice. And people love to hear you speak when you, you speak so eloquently. But do you really know who you're dealing with? Can I tell you that it's imperative for every believer to know the God he or she is dealing with. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? By embracing through faith what he reveals because nobody knows God like God. Glory be to God. I don't care how many, how, how many alphabets you get behind your name. I don't care how many schools you go to. Nobody knows God like God. Mm. And the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of God to the believer because the Holy Spirit reveals to our spirit what we didn't know about God in our life. He doesn't reveal it to us all at one time but he gives us a little out of time so that we would have to exercise our faith and trust him to know him more. Oh God, the problem now with some people is this. They have limited the access of their faith. Some have limited the access of their faith to only things. Some people have limited the access of their faith to only opportunities. But faith can access you to knowing God more. Oh, God, because the more I believe by faith, the more he reveals about himself so that I will know who I am dealing with in this relationship with God. Oh, Paul put it like this. He said, I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And somebody said, well, pastor, I'm not trying to sign up for all of that. But do you really want to know him? Oh, I wish I had some delivered folk in here. You know more about God in your deliverance than you did before you were delivered. Oh, my God, my God. You know more about God since Willie Lee left you. You know more about God since your heart was broken. You know more about God since you went through that trouble in your life because if you hadn't went through that, you would know that he is able to heal you. You would know that he's able to mend that broken heart. You would know what God could do. We got to understand who we are dealing with. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the text. The text says, we find David praying for help from the Lord. Now, have you ever prayed for God to help you? Mm -hmm. but you had some assumptions associated in expectation when you open your mouth to pray. Mm. You prayed for his help, but now you got a problem with how he helps you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Now, scholars say the reason for the prayer, David was dealing with Saul. I'm trying to behave. He was dealing with Saul, who was trying to kill him. And 
He needed help from the Lord in understanding why Saul was trying to kill him. David could not understand this because from his perspective, he had a good relationship with Saul. Hmm. The Bible says that David served Saul. Anytime Saul uh, would get vexed in his spirit, he would call for David to come and play for him. David respected Saul as king. David was a friend of Saul's son named Jonathan. And even Saul gave his daughter to David in marriage. David had a family-like kinship with Saul and his family. So you can see David's confusion of trying to figure out why Saul was trying to kill him. <laughs> Lean over to your neighbor. And just whisper these words. Sometimes your enemies are close to you. Don't say it loud. Don't say it loud. Don't say it loud. Just lean over and say sometimes your enemies are close to you. They may be so close they got your same last name. They, be, they might be so close that they know all of your secrets. They may be so close to you that they know how to hurt you. Why? Saul, are you trying to kill me? It was determined that a spirit of jealousy had entered into Saul's spirit against David. Because God used David to defeat Goliath. And the people were praising David more than they praised Saul. Oh, can I tell you that one of the demonic things that the enemy will send to destroy a relationship is jealousy. The enemy will send jealousy to a marriage to destroy it. The enemy will send jealousy to a friendship to destroy it. The enemy will send jealousy to the house of God in an attempt to destroy it. Uh, this is what we deal with uh, when it comes to jealousy. Jealousy is a hostile feeling or disposition towards someone who is believed to have or enjoy an advantage. Mm. Saul believed that that David had an advantage that he didn't have and he was right because David had an anointing on his life but his reaction was wrong because he didn't know who he was dealing with and can I tell every anointed person there will be those who will be jealous of you because God is using you and all they see oh my God is the advantage advantage that you have but they don't know where the advantage is coming from oh my god David didn't defeat Goliath because of his military prowess David didn't defeat Goliath because he had great weapons David did not defeat Goliath because he was so strong in his own might David had none of that but David had an anointing oh I wish I had somebody in here David had the power of the living God in his life. And if you are anointed, you need to know that you will have to deal with some jealous people because they see what you do, but they don't know who's doing it through you. Oh, I wish I had about 15 of y'all that would just lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not me. I am what I am by the grace of my God. And I know favor ain't fair. God never 
never said it would be but I'm not going to apologize for the favor on my life you need to get your life together and step out of your jealousy because I'm going to keep riding with God but notice here Oh, I felt that, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I need every anointed person uh, to just give God a praise. Uh, oh, God. Uh, because, see, you uh, are the one that he set the table for uh, in the presence uh, of your enemies. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody. Uh, you meant it for my bad. Uh, I'm covered in the anointing, uh, and that's why it turned out good. Uh, for we know that all things uh, shall work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called I need the anointed people to quit apologizing Quit acquiescing to folk that God ain't using. Now, okay, he ain't using you. But Cain, let me tell you this. If you do well, God will use you too. Notice here, David is dealing with a situation. He's dealing with a situation with Saul, and I'm trying to take my time, y'all, that was caused by the spirit of jealousy, and he needed God's help. But he starts questioning God about the situation. As if it's the Lord's doing. Hmm. Let me give you a little bit of a history on the background of the questioning. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 12. Now this is after Saul's many attempts to kill David. And David had the opportunity to kill Saul. But he didn't do it. Can I get about 15 bold people to lean over your neighbor and say, I let you make it. <laughs> with all this anointing on my life and with all this power in me, I let you I'm not scared of you. I just let Oh God, I let you make it. I'm not fearful of you. I just let you make it. Here's what David said. He said, the Lord judge between me and thee and the Lord avenge me of thee but my hand shall not be upon thee. Oh my God, can I, can I skip through your neighborhood? Uh, glory be to God. Uh, I need every believer to know uh, that you ain't got to get crazy with crazy people. You ain't got to, you ain't got to cuss folk out and you ain't got to treat them bad and you ain't got to walk around them as if uh, you smell something all the time. No, you got to understand that there's a day coming that God's going to judge you not for what they did to you, but what you did in response to what they did to you. Her father neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm trying to stay with God. I'm trying to walk this thing the way God wanted me to walk. I'm not going to let you send me to hell by all the stuff you send to me. I'm going to walk with God. In this, who tell your other neighbor, oh my God, what does Sister Ross feed him this morning? In this, David was actually Glory be to God. Releasing his faith to God to fix the situation. But Psalm 13 says, 
he had trouble dealing with the Lord's method and timing although he had made a declaration of faith in 1 Samuel 24. What does that tell us? That tells us that our declaration of faith does not excuse us from the feelings of our humanity that we deal with in our situation. Oh, say that again, Pastor. Okay, I will. That our declaration of faith does not excuse us from the feelings of our humanity that we deal with in our situation. Oh, God. And here in Psalm 13, we see the feelings of his situation. David asked the Lord five questions. How long will you forget me? Will it be forever? Forever, ever? Forever, ever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I have to counsel myself about this sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Can I tell you this morning, these were questions from his fear and not his faith. Because fear will cause you to contradict your faith. Oh, God. Faith says God will. Fear says I don't know if he will. Uh, faith says it's done. Fear says but when. Faith says God got it. Fear says what can I do? Uh, touch your neighbor and say neighbor. Pray from your faith and not from your fear. Glory be to God. When you're trying to get deliverance. When you are soliciting the help of the Lord. Don't you pray from your fear. You pray from your faith. And can I remind you of what the definition of faith is? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You ain't supposed to see it, but you got to have faith for it until God manifests it in your life. Oh, lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got some stuff on the altar, but I got to have faith for it. I got some stuff that I'm believing God to do, but I got to have faith for it. I know you don't see it yet. You ain't supposed to see it. But wait a minute. God is going to do exactly what he said. David had entered into oh God what I like to call Situational relationship perspective. Where he looked at his situation and concluded that's how God was dealing with him. He had concluded that God had forgotten about him. He had concluded that God had hid his face from him. He had concluded that God had forsaken him. He had concluded that his enemy was exalted above him. Can I tell you that in this season, many people have entered into a situational relationship perspective with God. They prayed about some stuff that they have not said come to pass yet. And they got questions for God. They believe God for some stuff that seemed to be held up. They have bombarded heaven about things and they have not seen them yet. And they have made some conclusions made on an assumption of God and not the knowledge of who he is. But can I tell you that that thing that you have requested of the Lord, if it's in his will, he will bring it to pass. That's what I know about him. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's what I know about him. I know that he's faithful to his children. He does all things well. He's a trustworthy savior. High five a neighbor and say, don't allow yourself to enter into a situational relationship perspective. But let your perspective be shaped by revelation of who you know God to be. Oh, God. Your situation does not fully define how God is dealing with you. Somebody help me preach this message and lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, your situation 
does not fully define how God is dealing with you. Israel's Red Sea situation did not fully define how God was dealing with them. Daniel's lion's den situation did not fully define how God was dealing with him. Paul and Silas's prison situation did not fully define how God was dealing with them. Your situation does not fully define how God is dealing with you. Touch another neighbor and say, neighbor, in God's eyes, it's opportunity and not definition. Oh, I felt God. That situation in your life is opportunity, not definition. That situation in your marriage is opportunity and not definition. That situation in your life is opportunity and not definition. God's opportunity to reveal who he is in your life. Right here in verse 5 and 6, David shifts from situation to revelation. We need a shift in this season. We need the believer to shift from situation to revelation. Your situation is real, but so is the revelation. Your situation is your reality, but so is the revelation. Your situation is true, but so is the revelation. What you're dealing with is active, but so is your God. Touch your neighbor. I feel like preaching now. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't serve a dead God. I don't serve an inactive God, but I serve the living Savior. Glory to his name. Glory to his power. Glory to his love. Glory to his mercy in my life. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's active. He's working right now. You don't see him, but he's working. You might not think that God is getting it together, but he's working. He never forgets. The Bible says he never sleeps nor slumbers. That's why you can go to bed at night with all the stuff going on around you. Because God is an active God. He's watching over you. God, now can I go a little deeper while you are dealing with your situation? The Lord is dealing with you. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is dealing with me while I'm dealing with my situation. In verse 5, David's spirit spoke to his feelings and told him in the situation he needed to deal with God. His spirit told him, don't deal with Psalm. Don't deal with how it looks. Don't deal with what people are saying. But deal with your God. Because David didn't know why Saul was trying to kill him. He didn't know why or what he had done for James for Psalm to be jealous of him. He didn't know why Saul was doing the most. But his one thing that he knew he knew God I heard David say one thing that I desire of the Lord and that will I seek after high five your neighbor and say neighbor I'm not looking for help anywhere else I'm not looking for help from the government I'm not looking for help from mean people I'm not 
looking for help from nobody. But I heard, I heard David say, I will look to the hills from which coming my help. All of my help come from the Lord. I wish I had somebody that would run over to the other side of the church and high five a neighbor on the other side and say all of my help comes from the Lord. He helped me when I didn't have nothing. He helped me when the devil was trying to kill me. He helped me when sickness was in my body. He helped me when they said I wasn't going to make it. All of my help comes from the Lord. The Spirit told David that we have trusted in God. We trusted in his mercy. We trusted in his favor. We trusted in his goodness toward us. But tell your neighbor, if you can trust him in your past, you can trust him right about now. Because he is the same yesterday today today and forever I can trust that tell your neighbor I've had people that was different on Monday than they were on Tuesday but I got a God I know him like that I got a God that I can trust when it's raining and when the sun is shining I got a God that I can trust when everybody's gone I, I'm there by myself. I love the song. Dr. Hamilton didn't say, I come to the God alone. Sister Rhonda, while the dew is still on the roses, but there's something. Mm, there's something that lets me know that God is there with me I wonder is there anybody here that you thought you were by yourself but God made his presence known depression thought you were by yourself low self esteem thought you were by yourself the enemy thought you were by yourself but God I got some advice that I want to give quit trusting your feelings and listen to your spirit quit trusting your feelings and start listening to your spirit because your spirit knows who God is your spirit knows what God can do your spirit connects with God's spirit and the revelation that David got shifted his perspective he said my heart shall rejoice in your salvation the shift brought him to understand that he was dealing with a God that saved him from his enemy's intention he was dealing with a God that saved him from the enemy's attack he was dealing with a God that saved him from his enemy's devices and scheme I five your neighbor and say neighbor he's not a weak God he's not not a lying God he's not an intimidated God but he is the Lord strong and mighty in this season you got to know who you're dealing with who you're in relationship with who you're riding with ask your neighbor who you're riding with I don't know about you but I'm riding with Jesus I know the car may not look good but it ain't about the car it's about who's driving because I know 
know that if I ride with Jesus, I will, I will make it. I'll preach the rest of it another time. But I feel in my spirit that I need a witness in here. Come here, Paul. Bring Silas with you. The Bible said they were in a prison situation. Now they put them in the inner part of the prison. We call it solitary confinement. They were there and to make sure that they didn't go nowhere, they put them in the stocks, put the hands in their feet, in the stock. But tell your neighbor, the devil is trying to keep my hands down. The devil is trying to keep my body down. But the devil can't do nothing with the spirit of the Lord that's on the end. That's on the inside. And the Bible said that here's what they did. They started singing. They started praying. Singing. Praying. Singing. Praying. Sister Rhonda, I don't think they were worried about whether the song was traditional are contemporary because the song that you sing in trouble ain't got no beat the song that you sing in trouble ain't got no rhythm but the song that you sing in trouble is from your spirit and I heard I heard David say I will bless the Lord at all times his Praise shall continually be in my mouth, in my bad times, in my down times, in my troubled times. I'll open my mouth and give God the praise because I know who I'm dealing with. Now, the Bible says the prisoners that were with them did not know the God that Paul and Silas served. But Paul and Silas knew that the more they sang and the more they praised, the more they sang and the more they praised, I heard the Bible say he inhabits the presence, the praises of his people. Can I see God in heaven? I need some help up here. I need some help. I need one person. Come help me real quick. I'll tell you why I do it myself. Now, here's what happened. God is in heaven, but he sees Paul and Silas. He's going to get from heaven to jail. Paul and Silas, they knew him like that. They knew that the more we sing, Sister Johnson get it, the more we sing, the more we pray, it pulls, it pulls him from heaven. I sing hallelujah, it pulls him. I give him glory, it pulls him. I keep on worshiping, I don't let folk stop my worship. I pull me until he's right where you are. And the Bible says that when he showed up, the jail start trembling. When he showed up, the earth start to quiver and quake. When he showed up, the prison doors open. I stopped by to tell you that if you want doors open in your life, you got to make the shift and you got to know who you're dealing with. There's no sickness that he can't heal. There's no bondage.
curse that he can't break you out of. There's no devil that he can't defeat. I need about 25 of y'all to say, Lord, I'm shifting. I'm shifting. I'm shifting. I'm going to work in the morning. Shifted. I'm going back home. Shifted. Devil, you tried it, but it didn't work because I, I was shifted. I need every shifted person to give God a shifting praise. I got to leave you. Before you get mad at me, but lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil don't know who he's dealing with, but he don't know the God that's dealing with you. I wish I had somebody that would just tell the devil right here and right now devil you told me that God wasn't going to come through but I know him to be a way maker devil you told me that I would have to die with this sickness but I know him to be a healer devil you told me that my marriage was over but I know him to be a counselor I know him to be a heart fixer I know him to be a mind regulator and my God shall supply all your needs according In this season, there's a lot of adversity. There's a lot of uncertainty. Stuff is trouble everywhere. And some people say, well, Pastor Ross, it's like it never has been before. I respectfully disagree. It's always been trouble. You just know about it now. Think about your ancestors. I guarantee you they'll tell you, yeah, it was trouble. Y'all had to deal, y'all got to deal with the police, but we got to deal with everybody. Well, the supply of goods or not as, 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 oh no, baby. They made us give them the good part. We had to take what was left. It was always trouble. There was a time that you couldn't walk anywhere you wanted to walk. There's always been trouble. But the same God that got them out of trouble is the same God that can get you out of your trouble. Why? Because he's not intimidated by trouble. God, we, we hear about things like school shootings. We hear about all of these things. And we say, oh, my God, the devil is just busy. He's always been busy. Y'all looking at me like he just saw it. How many of you know he been at his job longer than you all?
I don't think there's anybody in here older than Adam and Eve. He troubled them. There's always been trouble. But Ayane, I love the word of Jesus when he told his disciples. He said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But if you know who you're dealing with, be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. This message was to encourage the hearts of the believer to know that the God you've heard about, you were taught about, he's still active. He's still active. One last thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. How far your neighbor say, yeah, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm going to leave you alone with this. Who do you think got you to where you are right now? Yeah. Pastor Ross, it was my intelligence. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Pastor Ross, you know I look good. No, it wasn't that. Yeah. Pastor Ross, it, it, it was this. It was that. No. It was God. Cost of my degrees, cost of my education. No, it's not. It's cost of my money. The Bible says God gives us the ability to gain wealth. So when you go from the university to the classroom, to the professor, to the finance office, to your home, to your parents, to the very beginning, you're going to run into God. Because if God hadn't have been there, there wouldn't have been no parents, there wouldn't have been no provision, there wouldn't have been no college. There wouldn't have been no professor. And there certainly would have been no degree. Do you know who you are really dealing with? Young people say, well, in dealing with somebody, there's the potential and there's the actuality. I want to leave you with this question. Are you dealing with him on potential or actuality? Our ministers are coming. Our ministers are coming. If you're here today, revelation to be given. The things that we shouted on 13 years ago. 20 years ago the shout is still it's still good but we got to have new revelation on what we're shouting about it used to be okay Dr. Henry for us to say God's gonna make it all alright it'll be alright now we're dealing with a generation wants to know how is it going to be all right but here's the thing that I love sister Rhonda <laughs> the same the answer ain't changed oh y'all going to get it in a minute the answer has not changed 20 years ago it was God's going to make it all right 20 years later it's God's going to make it all right because he's so intentional about you. If you're here today and 
and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about church membership. I'm talking about giving your life to him and being in right relationship with God. this is you and you know you know you don't have right relationship with God but there's something on the inside even as we speak that's tugging away at your heart I want to I want to I want to share something with you real quick that Pastor Z shared with me this week Pastor Z goes to Jerusalem often, has friends in Jerusalem. And, and he was telling me that one of the tour guides when he was there told him, they, they looked and they saw former doing some things. And, 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 and he, he, he was looking at it. He was like, well, what is he? He said, well, he said, we we kind of do things differently over here than y'all do over there. He said, over in the West, y'all plow the ground first. Then y'all sow the seed. He said, over here, we sow the seed and we plow where we sow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, God. He said, when you plow where you sow, not only are you plowing the ground, but you're pushing the seed even deeper in the ground. The word of God is seed. And the reason that we give the invitation is because we're plowing what we sowed and if you're here and you say well pastor I want Jesus I want Jesus in my heart you're streaming with us and you say I want Jesus in my heart here's what I want you to pray with me father I come right now I'm lost I'm away from you I don't know you but father I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive me of my sins and all of my trespasses come into my life. Take over my life. Lead me and guide me in the way that you would have me to go. I receive you now in my life and I thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and meant it in your heart, congratulations. You are in relationship with Jesus. Now, let me say this. It's very, very important. Regardless of what the YouTubers say, it's very, very important that you get into a church so that you can grow in this relationship so that you can be taught the word of God, so, so the word of God can be preached to you so that you can grow in this faith. If you are, those of you who are streaming, if you are in the, it, you know what, I almost said it, I messed up again. It don't matter where you are. I would like to recommend the Abundant Love Fellowship Church to you. Glory be to God. Here's what I can guarantee you, that the word of God will be preached and the word of God will be taught to you and that there will be examples of godliness that you can follow to enrich your faith and to promote your growth in God. And if you're here, I want you to come. If you're here live with us and you say, well, Pastor Ross, I feel like God is, 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 this is the place that I need to be. This is the place where God is bringing me to. Glory be to God. I'm coming right now. Come, come, come.
If God said, this is the place I want you to be, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Glory be to God. I want you to come. I want to thank God. I'm going to ask our two newest members to stand. That's our two new, newest members to stand. Amen. Amen. Praise. Come on, God. Give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to know, thank God for y'all joining this fellowship. We know that God got great things in store for you right here. <laughs> Glory be to God. The last call as we get ready to leave. If you desire prayer for anything in your life, it don't matter what it is. If you desire prayer, I want you to come. I want you to come. You say, Pastor, I got a situation going on that, man, I don't know. That's, that's fine. God knows. Glory be to God. If you got something going on in your life and you need prayer, can I tell you that prayer connects you to the answer if it's a problem prayer connects you to the way if something is already just bottled up in your life prayer is access Dr. Hamilton please come up prayer is access to the power of God if you desire prayer come on come on Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, come. Won't you come? Won't you come? Hallelujah. He wants to show you something that you didn't know about him before. Won't you come? I will be away. Won't you come? Won't you come? I will be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Come, 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 come. I will. Won't you come? Won't you come?
Hallelujah. Listen, listen. We have a couple of things that we need to share. Amen. And we're going to ask you, we're going to ask you, amen, to be, to be patient with us as, as we share. Amen. 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 We're going to ask Minister Wright to come and share. Okay. Thank you. Uh, giving all praise to God, who is the strength and the source of my life. Um, I just wanted, I spoke with Pastor, but I just wanted to let um, everyone else know that um, myself and my daughter and her three children, um, we will be moving. We will be moving next Thursday. Um, God hadn't told me to uh, switch churches or do anything about that. So um, I just wanted to let everybody know. Um, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. So I'm going to trust and I'm going to depend on him, amen. And we ask that you would just continue to pray for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Transition is not disconnection. Amen. Amen. And now we have a young lady who would like to share her testimony with you. Praise God. Um, thank you for just everything. So um, my daughter, this is, this is regarding my daughter. Uh, when she was about six months, uh, she's 10 months now, a little over 10 months. When she was about six months, we went to the doctor and um, it was a concern about like this little part on the right side of her skull where like it was like just a little slanted. So, you know, her doctor checked her out and um, she was like, mama, I'm not concerned about it. She was like, but let's send you to, you know, a specialist, you know, just to be safe. I said, okay. She said, because everything else, you know, is going great. She's, you know, she's advanced for her age. She's hitting all her milestones. So I'm like, okay, all right, trust God. So we go and meet with this, uh, he was a neurosurgeon uh, a week later. And the moment he walked in, he was like, oh, mama. He was like, I'm concerned. And I, my heart dropped. And I'm like, my baby, like, this is my baby. When I look at her, like, she's so perfect to me. God gave me her. And, you know, I always told God, like, you know, you've given her to me, but I'm going to give her back to you. Like, you know, I want you to cover her, protect her, and, and teach me how to care for her. And so he, his concern was this thing called a ridge in the middle of her forehead. There's two things that that could be, something called a metopic ridge or something that's worse, which is called metopic craniosynostosis. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of that, but it basically is a condition in which the skull plates fuse too early, which can cause intracranial pressure, um, which will cause, can cause seizures developmental delays, behavior issues, a number of other things. In order to correct it, it would require an extensive surgery requiring them to put my baby to sleep, to cut her from ear to ear across her skull to correct it. So I was like, God, like, why my baby? You know, and I know you're not supposed to question God, but I'm human and I'm, and I'm trying to understand this, like, not my child. And so he said, I'm going to send you to get a CT scan. We went and got a CT scan about a week or two later. We go get the CT scan, and I'm looking on my chart, trying to understand the results, and it says, you know, there was fusion of her metopic suture. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what this means. We set, schedule an appointment to be seen by the neurosurgeon again, and he was like, mama, she has craniosynostosis. My heart dropped. And I cried, I cried in the office, I cried on the ride home from Temple, and I'm just like, not my baby, like, my baby has to go through this surgery? And so he was like, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send you to the surgeon who's actually gonna perform the surgeon, he's a plastic surgeon. So a week later, we go see the plastic surgeon, and the plastic surgeon, he's like, you're here to schedule surgery? I was like, well, yes, that's what the neurosurgeon, you know, sent us for. He said, well, mama, I've looked at her CT results and I'm looking at her and her condition to me looks so borderline. <laughs> it, looks, it looks so borderline that I can't say that this is metopic craniosynostosis. And I'm like, what? Like, 
A week or two ago, I got a, I got a notice that my baby has metopic craniosynostosis that's going to require surgery. And I just can't see me putting my baby through that. So then now I'm getting something else. You know, you're saying that, no, mama, this is probably just a metopic ridge we're dealing with. I say, okay. So originally me and her dad, we were just going to go ahead and go with the surgery because this surgeon has been doing this for over 20 years. But he is not my God. He is not my God. He is not my God. So the day we met with the, with the plastic surgeon, I messaged her doctor on my chart. I said, I have to get another opinion. I have to get another opinion because I want to make sure that I'm making an informed decision and things like that. Her doctor sent the referral over minutes later. Minutes after that, I get a call from Temple. Can we schedule your daughter an appointment for tomorrow? Yes. Yes, you can. So we schedule that appointment. We go down there. This doctor, he says, Mama, this baby is so advanced. She's so beautiful. He was like, her situation is so borderline. I don't think that this is metopic craniosynostosis. <laughs> when I tell you that this message that God, I mean, that pastor preached this morning, do you know who you're dealing with? <laughs> do you know who you're dealing with? Like, my God, he is amazing. God is amazing because... Because that third opinion, he said, before we make a decision on what this is, we're going to keep an eye on her for two months. He said, we will know if anything changes within two months. So last week, we went to the follow-up appointment. And he said, Mama, he said, she just has a metopic ridge, and she'll more than likely grow out of it. He said, even if she doesn't, she's going to be all right. And that's all that mattered to me is that I don't have to put my baby through that surgery. God is amazing. And God is amazing. And I just want any of y'all to know, like, that if y'all are struggling with anything, know who you're dealing with. <laughs> know who you're dealing with. Because this was one of the biggest tests of my life. And this is the biggest blessing of my life, this little girl. And I thank y'all, like, for letting me share this with y'all. Okay. Amen. Now, I want you to keep the praises going because this beautiful young lady gave her life to Christ this morning. Oh, I thought y'all could do a little bit better than that. This young lady gave her life to Christ. Now, I know, I know that you're going to be moving, but will you bring her back to be baptized? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit selfish. I don't want nobody else to baptize her but me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, y'all, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you really know who you're dealing with? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Please stand. Please stand. Now, now we, we have a young lady in the church who has a child who's been sick, and God is healing him, but he still has a long way to go. And this young lady has been trying to do, when I tell you, she's doing the very best she can. She's had to be off work. She's had to, how many mothers in here know, whatever it takes. And I just believe that as her brothers and sisters, if we could, we would heal her son. If we could, we would make everything all right. But while we're praying to a God who's able, 
I believe that we can help her monetarily. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you will, and I'll, I'll, I'll be an usher. How many of y'all remember I used to be an usher? But I'm going to ask you, if you will, if whatever the Lord gives you, whatever the Lord tells you to give, I'm sorry, if you will, before you leave this service, if you will just come up and just bless our sister. Amen. Some people say, well, Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't have it. Remember what the scripture says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Glory be to God. God's going to bless you for it. God's going to bless you for it. Okay. If you, those of you who use Cash App, if you want to use Cash App to, to give, just put love offering. Amen. Oh, my God. She didn't ask me to do this, but I just want to do it to just, when we know of a need, amen, we want to try to help. If you are writing a check, we ask you to make that available, uh, put a bundle of love, and I guarantee you it's going to go to her. It's not going to the church. It's going to her, but just for bookkeeping purposes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, people of God. Thank you, people of God. Oh, they're still coming. Amen. Praise be unto God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Bless the name of our God. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Thank you. Somebody give God praise for your brothers and your sisters. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, men and women of God. We really appreciate, we love you, we appreciate you. Um, now, um, if you were here about two or three weeks ago, the media team said that they did not want to get in trouble with First Lady. So she's asked me to make an announcement so I won't get in trouble with First Lady she would like to see all, all of the, the pearl, all of the women, amen, uh, immediately after service for about two or three minutes. Amen? Amen. Grab your neighbor's hands. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for your abundant love. We thank you, God, for your abundant power. Your word says power belongs to you. Thank you for healing the baby, Father God. Thank you for healing everybody in this place. Thank you, Father God, for you are truly, truly God and God all by yourself. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we never leave your presence. And we pray that the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with each of us as we leave this place. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who present us faultless before a strong with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be dominion, power, and glory. Henceforth now and forever and all of the children of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.